I can't smell anymore. I'm just sitting there and he could have just shit his pants and I'm just like, how's it going Milo? And I don't even know. I'm just eating his colloidal turd particles. Check one, two, go. We were not on the football team. We were not part of the cool crowd. We definitely didn't really fit in with a lot of groups. I went through my first few years in high school trying not to be different and not get beat up or whatever. <laughs> and then at some point a switch got flipped and I just said, fuck it, I don't care. I'm just gonna be the biggest, nerdiest, geekiest guy I can be. And that's when punk rock happened for me. And so it was just a perfect kind of dovetail. It was rough for me between the punk rock crowd and this, the nerd crowd, I was able to find a, like a little niche, a little place to put my bedroll down, you know. The nice thing about the LA scene or even the South Bay scene is that it's so encouraging of just the schmuck off the street can just kind of get in a band. And I thought, that sounds good to me. I, so when I joined the band, I was kind of like, this, it seemed very natural. It was usually some kind of catalysts, and it, it probably was Black Flag. They were kind of the first to start booking shows, and you know, first things they could ever book would be parties, but they'd always want some other band to play with them, and so you'd have bands like the Minutemen or the Sacred Trust. There's nothing in the water. I think kids everywhere want to play music. It's just they need a conduit. Black Flag kind of provided that conduit with you know, starting to book shows and you know, kind of building up, up a scene in, there, in, the, in the South Bay. I started touring again in 2010, and that was kind of in response to some health crises that Bill had. He had had a tumor removed from his brain. He kind of became a new man after that. I mean, he was so out of it, and we couldn't figure out why, but now, now we know it's because he had to take a grapefruit-sized mass out of his head. And there was just so much good feeling about like, oh my God, we've got Bill back. And it wasn't like we've got Bill back, so now he can get behind the drums. It was more just like, I've got my friend back. I just got caught up in all that, and I, and, I said, well, we should do some shows, you know. And we started doing shows in 2010, and I actually wrote, a, the first song I wrote at that point was Comeback Kid, which was about him and his whole health thing. Come back kid, it's exciting, you watch you live. I showed him that, and he's like, yeah, well, let's do it. Let's start writing songs. The actual recording, it, it lasted over about one year. For most of my drums, Stefan was there with me, because he writes really good drum parts. So he was there with me for most of the drums. But then when it was all done, then we put, put it back to the blasting room where my partner at the studio, Jason Livermore, he mixed it and mastered it. There's definitely an arc to it because it starts out with these tragedies that happened. You've got songs like Feel This, which is about Carl's, you know, kind of dealing with his mom's death and basically you know, saying, well, I'm not gonna medicate myself, I'm gonna, I need to feel it. You've got Bill talking about how even after he got physically better, he was just kind of heading down a, a bad path just because of all the aftermath of the health crisis. And so victim of means about that. And you, so you've got these people, and you know, they're trying to kind of get their lives together and, and recover from tragic events but by the end of the record, we're talking about how, you know, we've come full circle and we're, we're now kind of able to relive our, our kind of childhood dreams. That's the arc of the record, you know, ending up and, and triumphing over adversity. And by the end, we're all just like, yeah. Shameless halo. But for me, there's a realization of saying, I should have figured this out a long time ago, that music is kind of in my blood, and, and every time I've left it, I've had to come back to kind of rejuvenate myself, and why not just don't ever leave it? Why not just say, look, I'm, I'm a musician. That's what I am. That's just the first time in my life I've really, you know, look in the mirror and say that, because I've always been saying, well, I'm a scientist, and I do this music as a hobby. I'm through with that. It's like, music's my, what I do now, and, and, and it's what I want to do. To me, there's a, there's a triumphant nature to that, and there's actually an excitement to that. You need to embrace that. You need to take on the challenges that, that are inherent upon becoming that. 
these guys, they're my family, and so it's kind of home to me. It's comfortable. It feels like if there was a natural thing that I was supposed to be doing, this is what it is. I think when I finally had the science door close on me, it was, you know, it was kind of like, you know, me saying, you know, this is me for life. And so now I think, you know, in our aged wisdom, we go, well, there is a way of doing this and making it fun for years. You know, I think that's critical. You gotta be, you have to be friends with each other and you gotta make it fun. Otherwise, why are you doing it?